What is going on guys, my name is Sean and welcome back to yet another video. A couple weeks ago, I uploaded the catch all for Pokemon Sword and Shield's newest expansion, the Isle of Armor, which contained a whole bunch of additional Pokemon to be playable in the Generation 8 games. With all this in mind, a lot of you wanted me to take a look back at the Professor Oak challenge as well and see what can be improved. Today we're going to find out how easily you can complete Professor Oak's challenge in Pokemon Sword and Shield's Isle of Armor. Now, before we get into the video, I want to be very transparent in saying that this video is extremely similar to the last video I uploaded. However, there are a few changes that I made to make this a little more streamlined, and it's overall a lot more organized because I'm only playing one game. So if you have no idea what this video is all about, or specifically what a Professor Oak challenge is, I've included a playlist that you can check out in the top right of your screen to better understand what we're trying to accomplish here. As always, I'd highly suggest viewing that beforehand, but regardless, let's go over the rules and see just what we're up against. The first and most important rule of the challenge is that you have to catch every Pokemon that's available before each gym leader that you face. Because this DLC doesn't contain any additional gyms or story related roadblocks, we'll talk about how this challenge will progress in a second. The second rule is that you can only use one copy of the game. We're just going to use the same shield save file that I used last time because that remains relatively untouched since the last time I took on the challenge. And although you're normally supposed to start with a brand new game, because this content requires you to have more than just the base game, I consider this to be a completely different game as far as the rules address it. As always, if you're interested in taking on the challenge for yourself, I've included my spreadsheet that you can download to your own Google Drive to take on this challenge yourself. Before we get into the video, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content like this. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. So if you watched the last Professor Oak Challenge video that I uploaded at the beginning of the year, I finished the base game with a time of 92 hours and 8 minutes, so we're going to take our new final time and then subtract it from the original one to get our time for this section. Since this game has been out for quite a while now, it's no surprise that the storyline for this expansion isn't necessarily very large. However, there is a pretty solid amount of Pokemon added to the island, and thankfully there aren't really that many Pokemon that are genuinely difficult to obtain. Unlike the catch em all, I'm not going to get a living dex, which makes this process much, much easier, but the list of encounters is slightly different due to the virgin exclusives and trade evolutions that we obviously can't trade for. Before we head onto the island, we can meet Avery and the conductor of Wedgehurst to activate the DLC through the base game, but this is also our opportunity to catch a Galarian Slowpoke, as we're required to catch it before we can enter the Isle of Armor. Upon arriving at the main station at the Isle of Armor, we're greeted by the same woman in a lab coat that was everywhere else in the game, and she adds a separate extension to our Pokedex for this new area, which can be best compared to how the dex was split in Pokemon X and Y. This dex contains 210 Pokemon, but because the Isle of Armor contains a large portion of Pokemon that were already available in the Galar dex, we currently have just about half of what's required to complete the whole thing. Upon leaving the station, we have another quick match against Avery, and we can start to adventure around the new wild area to grab some new Pokemon. With our limited weather options, we can catch Baneri, Jigglypuff, Clefki, and Abra before talking to the Diglett Hiker at the bridge. Unlike the catch all we're going to need to grab a large majority of them for a Pokemon that's somewhat debatable if it's actually required for the challenge or not, but considering that this challenge is pretty straightforward, I figured to include it anyways. Upon reaching the dojo, we introduce ourselves to Mustard and prove our worth to him, which leads to the first section of the three trials, which requires us to chase down some extremely fast slowpoke in the soothing wetlands. Once we leave the dojo, the weather in most of the areas reflects what you set your switch's date to, but in order to gain full control, we're going to need to complete two more sections that will slowly make it a lot more convenient to get every Pokemon that we need. Heading back into the Fields of Honor, with a couple of weather changes, we can catch Blissey, Kadabra, Lopunny, Hapini, Chansey, Wigglytuff, and Comfey, which covers just about all the easy encounters that are available for this area. To keep better track of all the Diglett that I needed, I made sure to grab all 19 Diglett hidden in this area, which is nearly a fifth of what we need before we're done. Because this can be pretty annoying to find, I've included Austin John Play's guide in the description that contains all the locations if you're interested in doing this yourself. With nothing much left to do, we can head into the Soothing Wetlands to defeat all three of the Slowpoke, and conveniently the weather here was exactly what I needed for pretty much all the encounters in this area. Here we can catch Dunsparce, Bufalant, Lickitung, Licky Licky, Poliwhirl, Politoed, and Fomantis, which brings the total to 383 Pokemon. Heading back in the dojo, we can return the uniform back to Mustard and Avery, and as a reward, we're able to pick either Bulbasaur or Squirtle to bring along on our adventure. Now, normally gift Pokemon that have multiple options are usually a one-done kind of deal. Take your starter or the Saffron Dojo, for example. However, in this expansion, both starters are actually available in a different area, so it doesn't really matter at all which Pokemon you choose to take with you. For this playthrough though, I did choose Bulbasaur. As we're leaving the dojo, Mustard stops us and guides us to the next trial. 
This requires us to go through the Forest of Focus, the Training Lowlands, and all the way to the Warm Up Tunnel to grab some max mushrooms for the soup that Miss Honey is going to make. Before we head into any new areas, I explored all the soothing wetlands, collecting Glarica twigs, as well as the 20 Diglett hiding here, which gives us a total of 39 towards the side quest. The Forest of Focus contains a pretty wide variety of encounters, but this is also one of the only places where we have a mandatory raid battle, but we're going to do a few anyways when it comes time to grind out all of our catches. Here we can get a Moongus, Venipede, Fungus, Tangrowth, Emolga, Tangela, Scolipede, and Larvesta through Overworld and Static Encounters, as well as Venusaur through the Raid Dens in the Little Pond. For the time being, we're going to skip the Training Lowlands because we don't have access to all the weather patterns, and we'll head right to the Warm Up Tunnel. In this small section, we can get Sandshrew and Cubone before finding the Max Mushrooms and have another battle against Avery. Back in the dojo, we've completed the second trial, with the final trial being a battle against Avery in the stadium behind the dojo. Before we do that to unlock some new stuff, I took some time to visit some other areas and complete a few little tasks. I forgot to grab Zorua at the Fields of Honor earlier, so I stopped to catch that before getting all seven Diglett in the Courageous Cavern. Through one of the cave's exits, we can reach Challenge Beach. Through Overworld and Static Encounters, we can catch Magnemite, Psyduck, Dedenne, Meryl, Lorantis, Tentacool, Tentacruel, Staryu, Starmie, and Shinx, which brings a total to over 400 Pokemon for this challenge. Heading to the Training Lowlands, we have another large chunk of encounters, but this area is home to one of the very few version exclusives in this entire expansion. Here we can catch Heracross, Miltank, Tauros, Scyther, Kangaskhan, Lillipup, and Carvana through fishing, which means that the sword exclusive Pinsir will be unavailable in this challenge. Now that we've collected a pretty solid amount of the total, let's finish up more of the story. Like I mentioned earlier, the battle with Avery is the final task, and considering that Dragapult is like 20 levels higher than all of his Pokemon, it really isn't too much of a challenge, especially when we have another 5 that can easily do the same amount of work. Upon defeating him, Mustard congratulates us and gifts us Cubfu for completing the trials. Because the weather only changes a few areas through completing this event, we're going to have to take on the rest of the main story before catching the rest of the Pokemon that we need. At this point, we can head to all the marked locations on the map to complete the bonding moments with our Cub Fu. And after all that is completed, we're free to take on either the Tower of Waters or the Tower of Darkness. Because no sane person would want to do the single strike form for Urshifu, I decided to take on the Tower of Waters to complete this evolution line. After quite a few raid battles, I was able to give Cub Fu enough candies to take on any of the opponents within the tower. Upon reaching the top, we're greeted by Mustard, who challenges us to a battle against his own Cub Fu. Now, I know I mentioned this cool trick by using the Rocky Helmet in the Catch em All. But I only did that because I wasn't at the appropriate level, but since Chansey and Blissey raids give out so much experience, I ended up being overleveled after using all of them. Once we defeat Mustard, he reveals the scroll that's behind him the whole time and tells us that we can show it to Cubfu. With this, we can evolve Cubfu to Urshifu, which completes the main post-game story. Now let's take on the post-post-game? Now the events of the tower have been completed, all the weather patterns are properly synced, which means that we have full control of our encounters by adjusting the date on our switch. Because this makes it a whole lot easier to catch some specific Pokemon, let's go revisit some of our areas and finally finish them off. In the Training Lowlands, we can catch Scizor, Luxio, Luxray, Herdier, and Stoutland, and Sandile, Crocorock, Crocodile, Volcarona, and Fletchling at the Pot Bottom Desert. This brings the total to 425 Pokemon. Once we head back to the dojo, we can find our actual rival Hop there, and we're tasked with a few small side quests before we're truly done with the story. These revolve around hunting down the ingredient that will allow Urshifu to become its Gigantamax form, which as a result requires us to do a few events to solve what that item actually is. After following a bunch of plant Pokemon within the Forest of Focus, we can head to Honeycomb Island and shake an entire tree to take on a raid battle against a Vespaquen. After defeating her, we receive the ingredient and can head back to the gym to create the mix. Before we do that, I decided to make the gift Pokemon that you receive at the end of the story be the last Pokemon that I obtain. So let's spend a little bit of time catching basically everything else that's available in the game. This is quite a list, so let's just jump right into it. While we're on Honeycomb Island, we can grab Petalil and Lilligan. In the Honeycomb Sea, we can get Seedra and Kingdra. Skrelp and Horsey in the Insular Sea. Execute, Exeggutor, Sharpedo, and do a raid for Blastoise in the Workout Sea. Poliwag, Poliwrath, Wismer, Loudred, Dredagon, and Azuril in the Brawler's Cave. Skarmory, Lycanroc, Rockruff, Mianfu, and Mianxiao on Challenge Road, and Sandygast, Palisand, Zoroark, and Alakazam in the Loop Lagoon. This brings a total to 450 Pokemon. 
To finish up the rest of the side quests on the island, I took some time to collect all 8 Galerica twigs that I needed, as well as locate all the Diglett in Loop Lagoon, Brawler's Cave, Challenge Road, Training Lowlands, Challenge Beach, Forest of Focus, and one on Honeycomb Island to give us a total of 100 Diglett to unlock the most important reward that the Diglett guy can give us. Along with a bunch of Alolan Pokemon, the reward for 100 Diglett is one of the Alolan starters. Now this is where things are kind of a grey area, because the Alolan starters weren't catchable within the game before the DLC, so technically they're new Pokemon, however they're not in the Galar decks or the Isle of Armor decks. This is the same issue that a lot of people that do the Professor Oak challenges have with the Generation 7 challenges, as the Island Scan Pokemon are available, but none of them register in the Alolan Pokedex. Personally, I wouldn't count them solely because the goal of the challenge is to increase your Pokedex, but because I didn't get them in the catch em all, I figured that I should just toss them in to compensate. The starter you get is based on the same type that you chose at the beginning of the game, so for this challenge, I'm going to get Litten. This gives us a total of 451 Pokemon. Now let's finish up the rest of the story. Upon heading to the dojo, we can make the special soup for Urshifu, and then we're tasked with challenging Mustard to one last battle to test our strength. Once again, because our team is at a much higher level, this isn't too difficult, but I really have to admit that this is probably one of the more difficult battles that have been included in the Pokemon games. After taking out his last Pokemon, we've completed the game and are 100% free to do whatever we'd like in the story. If we head to this island in the Workout Sea, we can give this girl the Galerica Twigs and she'll weave them into the Galerica Cuff that we can use to evolve our Slowpoke that we caught way back in the beginning of the challenge. Now it's time to breed and evolve the rest of our catches. After biking around for a little bit, we can hatch our eggs to get Igglybuff and Squirtle, which leaves us to grind out basically everything else. Because we're in the post game, all of our encounters are level 60, which means that they only need a few levels to evolve. Although there are a decent chunk that I have to evolve solely off the fact that it's a little more convenient than actually finding the Pokemon in the wild, there are so many ways to level up your Pokemon fast in this game that it's still really an easy thing to complete. The Chansey and Blissey raids give out an absurd amount of rewards if you find them, with there even being a 5% chance to get a lucky egg. If you can manage to complete like 4 of these, you'd probably have enough EXP candies to evolve everything. After grinding out the raids, I was able to evolve the catches to get Galarian Slowbro, Magneton, Magnezone, Golduck, Azumarill, Whirlipede, Ivysaur, Sandslash, Marowak, Fletchender, Talonflame, Wartortle, Dragalge, Exploud, Toracat, and Incineroar. To finish off the whole challenge, if we head back to the dojo, we can go into Mustard's room. If we talk to the Porygon next to the couch, Hyde will ask if we're interested in adding to the team. With this, we've collected a total of 470 Pokemon, and all the Pokemon that are currently available in one copy of Pokemon Shield, including the Isle of Armor DLC. And with that, we've successfully completed the Isle of Armor extension to Sword and Shield's Professor Oak Challenge. But how did I do? So let's review. After claiming the Porygon, I finished the game with a time of 98 hours and 12 minutes, which means that this entire expansion took me roughly 6 hours flat to complete. And I'll be the first to tell you that it can be done a whole lot faster. I kinda relaxed on this one, and if I gave it a couple more attempts, I'm sure you could really book it through the story and get it all in like 4 hours, but either way, I'm really happy with how it all turned out. I'm not really sure if this is a controversial opinion or not, but I really do enjoy the DLC, and if you've ever been interested in trying out a Professor Rock Challenge, this might be a nice introduction to the genre if you're wary about trying something like Red and Blue. I know some people might think this video doesn't really follow the standards for a Professor Oak challenge, as I'm supposed to catch them before each badge, but considering this challenge normally only allows one game to make the challenge as accessible to everyone as possible, I figured that the same rules would apply to this because it involves paying an extra amount for more content. Either way, if you're interested in taking on this challenge for yourself, I've included a bunch of links so you can check out in the description, as well as my guide for the game so you can use to keep track of all the new Pokemon available in the Isle of Armor. If you end up completing this challenge yourself, Tweet me results at JohnstoneYT. Other than that, that's all there is to say about completing Professor Oak's challenge in Sword and Shield's Isle of Armor DLC. And that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and consider subscribing, as I'll be making more content like this very soon. If you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Follow me on Twitter to keep updated with new videos as they come out. If you're interested in watching me take on challenges like this live, I've been streaming a lot over on my Twitch account, as well as I upload highlights on my Johnstone Live channel that you can find in the description. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.